Hi, I'm Anthony Roberts, the pastor of New Beginnings Church in Bartow, Florida, and I'd like to welcome you to our Deeper Wednesday Bible Study. This is a time when our church gathers virtually around God's Word so that we can hear from God's inspired Scripture and learn to apply it to our lives so that we can be better disciples. Well, we are continuing our Bible study series on the book of Psalms for the past few weeks. We've been in a new sermon series that looks at the biblical concept of Thanksgiving. Now, of course, you and I are probably getting ready to cook some turkey, mashed potatoes, green beans, gather with our family and loved ones next week as we head into the Thanksgiving holiday. But I'm convinced that before Thanksgiving is a federal holiday that we celebrate because it's on our calendars, Thanksgiving is a biblical concept. Thanksgiving is a part of what it means to be in the people of God. It is what we do in response to what God has done. So this past Sunday, we looked at Psalm 107 verses 1 through 9 and took a deeper dive into this concept of Thanksgiving. So here's what Psalm 107, 1 through 9 says, and I'm reading out of the New International Version. It says this, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Now this is a foundational uh thing that we see over and over again in the book of Psalms is this idea that God's love endures forever. That's such a key part of this passage. It continues on in verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty, and he fills the hungry with good things. You know, one of the things that we hear in today's passage is the inspiration for the people of God's thanksgiving. You know, in this psalm, the people are uh, praising God. They're lifting up thanksgiving. But we learn a little bit about what is prompting them to this moment of thanksgiving. What is initiating the reason for their praise. So one of the things that we learn, first of all, is that the people have a reason why they're singing. The reason why the people are singing this joyful song is because God's love endures forever. The reason that the people have a song of thanksgiving is because they have experienced God's love firsthand and they have a story to tell. Isn't that what you and I experience when we experience the goodness of God in our life and we experience the love of God? It's hard to keep it to yourself and you got to start telling people Maybe you sing about it. you got to express it in some way. But we learn immediately in verse 1 that the reason that the people are lifting up this joyful song is because they've experienced God's enduring love in their life. The people are singing because God met them in their darkest hour. That's the reason that they're giving thanksgiving. You see, the psalmist is describing a situation, and this is something that happened time and time again in the history of Israel, God's people. He, he's describing a time when the people were in what is described as a wasteland, a place where they didn't have enough food, they didn't have enough water, they didn't have shelter. They were at a place where they were not settled. And the Bible says that they could not find a place to lay their hands. Not only were they homeless, but were told that the people were dying because they did not have their most basic necessities. Now, we all probably have been in a moment where we've experienced a dark moment where we've experienced a moment where it seems that we have lost everything and we are in a place where we feel like our souls are dying. The people, as they're reflecting on their story, they're remembering a time when they had been in a really difficult place. They were separated from the place where God intended them to be and they were literally in a wasteland. They had wandered looking for a place to lay their heads and they had just found themselves in a complete wasteland. But here's the wonderful thing. God showed up when they cried out to him. 
God showed up in the wasteland. God met them where they were at. And not only did God meet them where they're at, the Bible says that God led them out of the wasteland to which they had wandered. God led them out of the place where they were in darkness. God led them out of the place where they had nothing. God led them out of the wasteland. That's key in this verse. But there's also another reason that the people are singing. The people are singing this song of thanksgiving because God satisfied their need. You see, the people, the reason that they have an inspiration for this song is because not only did God lead them out of the wasteland, what grace that we experience from God when he takes us out of the wastelands that we find ourselves in. Not only did God lead them out of the wasteland, God led them to a new place. In the, in, the, in the passage, it says that God led them to a city where they could settle, a place where they could rest, a place where they could lay their head. You see, the inspiration for this psalm of thanksgiving is God's love that has been experienced by the people of God in a way that satisfies all of their needs. They can sing that God's love endures forever, not because they read it in a book, not because they heard it from somebody else, but because they've experienced it firsthand. They sing because God redeemed them from their broken situation. The reason that the people have an inspiration to sing songs of thanksgiving is because they experience the hand of God, his grace and mercy upon their life in a real present way. So there's a thought that we can take away from this passage that is applicable to our lives as believers, and especially as we are in this season of Thanksgiving. Here it is. The inspiration for our song of Thanksgiving, our life of Thanksgiving, is God's love. A love that endures at all times and in all circumstances. Let me say that again. The inspiration for our song of thanksgiving is God's love. A love that endures at all times and in all circumstances. There's nothing that can remove God's love from our life. There's no point at which God gets tired of loving that which he has created. God's love endures forever. And as a result of that, our lives should be full, not only of songs of thanksgiving, but as uh, our lives should be full of actions of thanksgiving. We should live a thankful lifestyle because of the experience of God's love. Now, this past Sunday, I talked about three reasons about why we find inspiration for thanksgiving in God's love that we experience. Number one, God's love inspires us because it overcomes those situations that seem to overcome us. The reality is that God's love is greater and stronger than anything we will face. Somebody needs to hear that this evening. You know, that situation that you're walking through is not somehow greater or deeper than the love of God. You might feel that you are overwhelmed by your situation, but you need to hear that God's love will overwhelm any situation that you're walking through. And the love of God can reach down into the darkest moment and it can embrace you in a way that nothing else can. We must understand that God's love, it overwhelms the things that try to take us out. Nothing can overcome the love of God, not even death itself. That's why Romans 8, 39 proclaims that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. So first of all, we must remember that Part of our inspiration for our songs of thanksgiving is that God's love overcomes those situations that seem to overcome us. But number two, we need to also remember that God's love is more than an idea. It is an experience that touches our heart, mind, soul, and body. God's love is a holistic love. It actually is something that we not only think about, but we feel, we experience. You know, there are a lot of books written about the idea of God's love. There's a lot of um, uh, books that have been written about the Greek and Hebrew uh, words of love that show up in the Bible and what they mean. But the truth of the matter is that God's love at the end of the day is an experience. It's more than an idea. It's more than a word. 
it is something that we experience in our life. And the reality is that God's love touches every part of us and restores us in the process. You see, God's love is not put off by our brokenness, but rather when God's love becomes infused in our lives, God's love begins to pull the broken pieces of our life back together. That's why Psalm 107 proclaims that our God satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. We can trust that God will satisfy all of our needs. So number one, God's love overcomes those situations that seem to overcome us. Number two, we can remember that God's love is more than an idea. It is an experience that touches our heart, mind, soul, and body. But finally, we must remember that God's love reverses bad situations, and there's nothing the enemy can do to stop it. What does that mean, preacher? It simply means that when God says yes, no one else can say no. When God says stop to a situation in our life, it has to stop. When God intervenes in a situation, that situation has to bow down before God. God's love will reverse bad situations. It will change the trajectory of our life. It will take us out of the middle of the storm, and it will put us on the peaceful sea. The reality is that God's love is often experienced as a reversal of our circumstances. You see, God's love will put our life in reverse. The hungry will be fed. The sick will be healed. The lost will be found. Those who cannot walk will walk again. The broken will be put back together. God's love is often experienced as God's reversal power in our life. That's why Psalm 3011 says, uh, where the psalmist declares, You, God, have turned my wailing into dancing. That's why the redeemed have a reason to get excited is because God will often come into their life and reverse their predicament. God will change their circumstances. So again, the three reasons that we have inspiration to thanksgiving through God's love. Number one, God's love, it overcomes those situations that seem to overcome us. God's love is also more than an idea. It's an experience that touches our heart, mind, soul, and body. But finally, God's love reverses bad situations, and there's nothing that the enemy can do to stop it. So what do we do with this principle, this idea that the inspiration for our song of thanksgiving is God's love, a love that endures at all times and in all circumstances? Number one, we can remember where God met us. You know, when we think back to where we were when God encountered us and we, we were saved by God, that ought to cause us to give thanksgiving. It ought to make us excited to praise and worship God. Number two, we can remember how God brought us out. Not only did God save us, but God brought us out of our situations. God brought us out of sin to a place where we were in relationship with him. We ought to give thanksgiving for that. But we should also remember how God led us to a place of rest. I think that at the end of the day, Part of the reason that the people of God can lift up a song of thanksgiving at all times is because when we allow ourselves to be led by God to the places he intends us to be, we find that we can rest in God's presence and nothing can remove us from it. So let's remember the inspiration for our song of thanksgiving in this Thanksgiving season is God's love, a love that endures at all times and in all circumstances. Well, I pray that you have a wonderful rest of your week. We would love to see you on Sunday morning and worship in this holiday season. We have church every Sunday at 1030 a.m. on the campus of New Beginnings Church in Bartow, Florida. We're praying for you. I hope that during this season you get some rest, you have some time with your loved ones, but most importantly that you have a deep, deep experience and presence of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in your life. We're praying for you. Please pray for us. We hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful day.